Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Trinity United Church of Christ in Concord, North Carolina. Uh, welcome to those of the few of us who are here today and all of you who are watching online either today or maybe even later. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We'd like you to know that at Trinity, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life journey, no matter who you love or how you identify, we welcome you into the full life and ministry of this loving congregation. So welcome to Trinity today and to our worship service on this third Sunday of Advent. Just a couple of announcements real quickly. Uh, please do like and follow our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash comma church and you'll get alerts about what's going on if we do go live, when we go live and other updates as well. Do also subscribe to our email list. You can do that through emailing our office at trinityuccoffice at gmail.com. And that will give you some weekly updates just about what's going on here. The big news this week, I'll say some of this in the prayer time, so I won't say it now, but I do want you to know that our roofers were back yesterday, and hopefully, I think we've gotten the whole roof finished now. Uh, so fingers crossed, we're about um, $6,400 short of our two-for-one challenge. So uh, still, we have room to do that, and we can do that uh, even through the end of the year into January. So uh, please uh, consider making a donation of that. A number of donations have come in over the last couple of weeks. So thank you for all of you who are contributing to that, as well as to the ministries here with your financial gifts. I don't think I have other announcements to make today. So I'll give you some updates at our prayer time. This is the day God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. join in our responsive intent. In times like ours, joy can be hard to summon. In times like ours, joy can be hard to even imagine. And still the season beckons us to be merry. The scriptures tell us to rejoice always. It sounds almost ludicrous. It borders on outrageous. How can we rejoice under the burden of so much injustice? How can we rejoice under the pall of so much death? It's enough to make those who are alone feel lonely. It's enough to make the grieving or the depressed feel sadder still. But ours is not a joy dependent on circumstances. 
Our joy is not derived from measurable outcomes. Advent invites us to rejoice in God's coming, even as we watch and wait and aren't sure what that means. Advent invites us to rejoice in all the ways God's love is with us, even as it empowers us to be true to all we feel. It won't be long now till the blessed babe is born. We rejoice in the true light shining its way into the world. that I would like to make known to you. One is that uh, we continue to pray for Elsie. She is doing better uh, responding to medication, and so her dizziness is not to the degree that it was. Please continue to remember her as well as her family, uh, her brothers-in-law as well as her sister, uh, Joan, uh, recovering. Joan is recovering from COVID, and her brothers-in-law also have had some health problems. So continue to remember them, please. Uh, Rachel's family, we continue to pray for um, as they have some COVID in their family. Her dad and uh, her stepmom remember them. Uh, they're continuing to improve, I hope. I talked with Rachel, I think it was on Tuesday, uh, and her, her dad was saying that he was fine. Of course, uh, she tells me that uh, he always says that. So continue to remember them in your prayers. Deborah is having surgery on her back uh, this coming uh, Tuesday. So remember Deborah and pray for her in that surgery, uh, some serious stuff. Uh, remember her. Also, uh, Shirley and uh, Shirley's mother. Her mother is uh, in a nursing home here and uh, is not doing well. We'd like for her to be doing better. And so remember her mother and also Shirley as well. Uh, Bobby E. continues to uh, do well with his uh, pacemaker implant. And uh, George, we remember in a nursing home also. Um, and then the family, well, actually a coworker of Trish's, the coworker's name is Debbie, and Debbie's husband, Jack, has had some strokes and is in the hospital. So remember Jack in your prayers. Also a friend of Kathy's, uh, the family of Angelo, 
uh, who died this past week, someone who, uh, with whom Kathy was very close uh, as a brother. So remember their family in your prayers. Also, some concerns about uh, just Cabarrus County Schools and going back to Plan C, um, which means that all the students and will be at home again, uh, which poses its own challenges, particularly with those for those with uh, special needs. Um, and of course, uh, doesn't allow for the very needed socialization uh, at any of those ages. So remember them, and as well as teachers, faculty, staff, everybody, uh, as well as the school board here in Cabarrus County who are a little bit divided on this. So remember them as well as they continue to try to make decisions to keep everybody safe. Um, some celebrations this week. Um, Sarah and Michael have an anniversary. Uh, next, I believe it's next Sunday on the 20th. Uh, the roof, of course, uh, I haven't heard from the roofer that they have completed it, but that was the plan for them to do yesterday, so we'll follow up with them on Monday. Uh, so that's done. And then uh, you might have seen on Facebook this past week that uh, Reverend uh, Liddell Benson and I attended a meeting of the Committee on Ministry of the Western North Carolina Association. And actually, both of us were surprised when we uh, left the meeting uh, for momentarily for them to have some discussion about uh, Liddell's ordination and came back into the meeting for them to announce that Liddell now has ordained ministerial standing in the uh, Western Association of the United Church of Christ. So, <laughs> congratulations to uh, Reverend Liddell Benson, who is now uh, ordained in the United Church of Christ. I hope that we can find a way to have some sort of celebratory event, uh, probably watching the next uh, month or so about how things go in terms of COVID and if it might be possible at some point after that soon to have an in-person celebration. But uh, if it looks like that's not gonna happen, then we'll go ahead and move into doing something online, uh, some sort of way to do that. So uh, thank you for your celebration of that. Let us, are there any other uh, prayer concerns you see on there, Bob? I don't see any. I just... Okay. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for this day and we're grateful for the coming of your presence among us in this world. You who have given us life and breath and being, you who sustain our lives, with your own. We recognize your holiness and honor your presence. Your presence comes, oh God, to bring needed change in our world. We recognize places where that hasn't happened yet, that there is still a lot of injustice and in places where your presence needs to be not only seen, but heard and felt and acted upon. As we hear today from the prophet Isaiah and from, and from the prophet Mary, we imagine a time when your presence comes in such a way on this earth that transforms who we are. So hear our prayers for transformation of our world, O oh God, into the realm of your abiding presence among us. Be present now with those whose names we've called for prayer. In all those places, God, of needed healing and blood pressure medication adjustment and better health, for recovery from COVID. We pray for those who are dealing with physical health problems right now in many ways. Facing surgery like Deborah, recovering from strokes like Jack. We pray for all those with physical needs, health needs, that they will get the attention, 
the medication they, they, they need and deserve. Hear our prayers for their healing, O oh God. And of course, we're reminded of how crowded our hospitals are becoming, have become, as COVID cases rise and rise critically, to critical levels. Be with all those who are on the front lines of being in hospitals and care clinics, emergency centers, ICU wards, for all of them, God, we pray for their energy and for the renewal of their spirit in the midst of what is still yet to come, the worst of this virus. Be with them, God. Be with them not only physically and spiritually, but be with them emotionally as they deal with, indeed, God, what is the strain on, on their mental health? and having to give care under these circumstances, having taken an oath to do that. Bless them, bless their lives, bless their hands and minds and bodies and spirits to give good care, to be strong, persevere. We remember others, God, in our communities who serve us in many ways, bless them our county leaders, our school board, our city leaders here in Concord, bless them, oh God, as they have to deal on a daily basis with people who don't want to wear masks and leave them scrambling, planning events that are not safe. Hear our prayers, God, for the restoration of sanity among us and for strength and energy for our leaders locally here as well as nationally. We continue to pray for the transition, the peaceful transition of power in our government. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for that peaceful transition of power. Thank you, God for those school kids who will be at home now in Cabarrus County. Be with them, give them the strength and energy, perseverance and attention to their own mental health for doing school online and learning as best they can what they can and interacting for socialization however they can. Thank you, God, for those teachers and those administrators, those people who clean and cook, and those, oh God, who are staffing our schools. Bless them. Bless their hands. Bless their minds. Bless them with creativity and addressing the educational needs of our children in this most unusual time. Give them the strength and energy they need to persevere and keep going to the break, the holiday break, and then afterwards. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for our congregation. As we struggle to stay together and stay connected, thank you, God, for those who faithfully come back each week online for our worship service. Thank you, God, for those who pray for each other in this congregation. Bless their prayers, bless their lives. Give them the strength and energy they need to persevere in this difficult time of absence from this place. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for our care, our self-care, our health care, our mental health. Guide us, be with us, comfort us, comfort us with your presence. And move us to celebrate with you, O oh God, the joy of your coming on this third Sunday of Advent and the word and message before us today. We celebrate with Michael and Sarah this week. We celebrate with Reverend Liddell Benson and ordained ministerial standing in the United Church of Christ. We celebrate a new roof on this building. 
And we give thanks for your care for all of us. We offer to you our prayers of concern and need as well as our expressions of joy and celebration. So hear our prayers, O God, and hear us as we pray, as Christ taught us. Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because the Lord has anointed me, has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of God's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display God's glory. They shall build upon the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense. And I will make an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are the people whom God has blessed. 
I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for God has clothed me with the garments of salvation. God has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, as a bride adorns himself with jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. This is a reading from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. On this third Sunday of Advent, we traditionally hear, along with this passage of Scripture from the prophet Isaiah, words from Mary, the mother of Jesus, who I also referred to earlier today as prophet. I think if you listen to her words, you'll know why. Mary sounds less like a 14-year-old single pregnant girl in this passage than the Mary of several generations later. Declaring these things have been brought about, past tense, as if it's already happened. Hear Mary's words. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call him blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Thank you, Mary Barbara, for that reading. Luke's Mary sounds, uh, as I said, less like a 14-year-old single pregnant girl than the Mary of several generations later. And so I wondered why this is. How is it she says these words in this way? Why is it she says these words in this way? And I suppose one reason would be that she uses the past tense because she is declaring what this child hopefully will bring about on this earth. And the birth of this child signifies that having already happened. And usually that's the way we interpret this passage. That Mary declares what this child will embody as God's agent as God's power of attorney in our world, so to speak. Or maybe as God's attorney general, this child will grow to overturn laws and rewrite those laws in favor of those most in need rather than those most in power presently. The source of Mary's joy seems to be that God's justice is on the side of people like her. And it is coming into the world with the birth of this child. People like her will be saved. A young woman with no choice in the matter of being impregnated. How many times has this story happened since Mary uttered those words? A young woman with few choices available to her regarding what's happening in her own body. It's funny to me as I read this passage, as I hear these words from this woman. It's funny how we so believe that it was not only okay but essential for Mary to be pregnant outside marriage by a dominant and necessarily male spirit who gave her no choice so that Christ could be born. 
and without shame, we venerate her as submissive to God. Yet other young women since her get our scorn. Why is that? Well, I don't have an answer for you on that, except that we really haven't looked very closely at what's going on in this passage. We'll do that sometime, but not in this sermon. Apparently, this child comes to make the young, like Mary, women, valuable to what is right in our world. But there may be another reason for Mary expressing this, these words, her words, in the past tense. Another reason for her expressing her joy that these things are completed action, have already come to pass. And that reason may be that Luke is writing much later than the actual events Mary's talking about, the actual events of Mary's pregnancy. And so by the time Luke writes, Jesus has already been crucified and the people who follow after him are indeed those who have very little power in their world, in their society, in their religious community, in their local government. But in the story Mary tells and in the story of the Messiah, the Christ of God, the one who brings salvation, literally salvation means healing, the one who brings healing to the world. In that story, the low are lifted up. The low like Mary. The low like the women of that day. And the high are brought down. The lame walk. People with mental illness are treated well with great benefits. People who are oppressed are liberated from their oppression. Luke, writing much later, also writes in the way Mary speaks, as if these things have come to pass. The mere idea that a woman pregnant outside of wedlock in that day becomes the mother of Christ and isn't shamed is astounding. How many have been shamed since? How many women carrying the very image of God have been shamed since then? First for being pregnant and, and then for being given no choice in the matter of their pregnancy. Or making choices about their own body that go against what others believe they should do. You see, over the years, we easily developed a biographical sketch of Mary, the mother of God, as a virgin without flaws. And being without flaws specifically meant not having had sex. In the story, we hear nothing of the pains of labor and travail that must have come with the birth of a child. We hear nothing in a stable, albeit. In the story, we paint the shepherds and the sheep together with the cows and the donkeys and the magi even without noticing the difficulties for us of Mary making such a claim that he brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. We put it all together in a romanticized manger scene out on our lawns, and as the Reverend Tracy Blackman says, we remain spectators rather than active participants in preparing the way for the coming of God's justice in Jesus Christ. How is it? How is it we can call ourselves Christians and yet remain spectators to what Christ is doing in the world and still sleep at night? I'll tell you how it is we can do that. <laughs> because we have that option. If we don't go to bed hungry, if we don't experience discrimination in the workplace, 
and in politics or in education, if we do not know what it's like to be judged by the color of our skin or the nature of our sexuality, our gender or identity, if we do not live in fear of deportation or whether we will ever see our kids again, if we don't have to worry about our rent being overdue or our lights being turned off or having to stay in a, an abusive relationship because we have no other options, if we don't have to worry about health care or its costs, then preparing the way of the Lord is done completely for someone besides us because we already have those things. And that seems to be a fundamental problem in our country right now. Is that justice means doing work so someone else has benefits. Preparing the way of the Lord from where I stand, from where most of us sit today, is done completely for someone besides ourselves because we already have these things. And we have the option of remaining spectators to a major scene. Remaining spectators to that reversal of fortune that this birth of Jesus seeks to bring into our world for those who do have to worry about those very things every minute of every day of their lives. If we do not have to worry about those discriminations and that sort of disenfranchisement, then this image of light coming into the darkness that we talk about during the season, then this image of light coming into the darkness is just another thing to observe rather than something to deeply engage and have transform us. There's a problem, you see. There's an eternal problem for those of us in power with Jesus coming into our world. With Jesus coming in the proclamation of the realm of heaven coming upon us, we who do not have to worry about those discriminations and that kind of disenfranchisement are really the ones living in a darkness of indifferent observation to those in greatest need. And that indifference threatens to annul the very marriage of Christ to the church. At no other time in our history has the marriage of Christ to the church been so tenuous as it is right now. It is in danger of being dissolved because those of us in the church are the ones that need to see the light coming into the world. What happens when the light comes into the world? It illumines things in the darkness. But it doesn't just show us what's there. The light illuminating the darkness has a meaning. And the meaning is that we must change what's walking in darkness. And if we're the ones who are in power and oblivious to the needs of those who are not, then we are missing the point entirely and we're the ones in the dark. The way of the Lord we talk about. We talk about being a Christian. We talk about following Jesus. The way of the Lord is a way of lifting up those in the low places. Which by and large as I look around this country today is not the church. The church isn't the one that needs to be lifted up folks. The church is in the place of the ones that need to be brought down. The way of the Lord is a way of lifting up those in the low places which is not the church nor white American Christianity. The low places are not going to be found here in the church. But on the margins, 
and in the courtrooms where people cannot afford representation. The low places are where you're going to find the presence of Christ, not among those making billions, but those fighting for a living, sustainable wage, doing what we call, what do we call them? The lowly jobs. We call them that, lowly. It's in those places the way of the Lord is to be found. And then there's another little thing here. There's another little thing here. The way of the Lord is to not only be found in the raising up of the lowly, but the bringing down of the powerful. The way of Jesus doesn't just give power to the powerless. The way of Jesus also takes away power from the powerful who are abusing it. It brings down the powerful because you cannot free the oppressed without liberating the oppressor. The powerful and the rich have to change their minds and ways of being in this world. That is also part and parcel of what God's justice in Christ and God's heaven in this world means. So, let's proclaim the realm of heaven. Let's proclaim the coming of Christ into our world. Over the next couple of decades, we're going to see women rising in power. We're already seeing that. We're going to see black and brown bodies rise to power. We're already seeing that. We're already seeing LGBTQ individuals rising to power. These things are already happening. And this is the coming of the realm of heaven on earth. This is the raising up of the lowly, the bringing down of the powerful. This is what we prayed for for 200 years, for 2,000 years, every Sunday. Your realm come on heaven as it is on earth. Did we think it wasn't going to happen if we prayed for it? This is it. And this is Mary's joy. This is where she gets her joy. This is Jesus' joy. And if we're following the way of Christ, then this is our joy. This is a joyous time. Indeed, the realm of heaven is coming into the darkness of this world, illuminating indifference and injustice and inhumanity. Not that it's really hard to disguise inhumanity anymore. Or really, no one's really trying to disguise their inhumanity anymore. It's a joyous thing for people who are black to rise to power. It's a joyful thing for people who are LGBTQ to rise to power. It's a joyous thing for women to rise to power. It's a joyous thing for those who are marginalized to become enfranchised and rise up to power and liberate the powerful oppressor from their high places. Now, I understand that may come with some degree of offense on our part. We may be offended by that. And if we find that offensive, then we need to recognize we're part of the power that needs to be brought low in order for the reign of God's heaven on this earth to be. So hear these words of Jesus. The blind receive their sight. Those who couldn't see this understand it. The lame walk, the lepers are healed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them, and blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept God's commandments and abide in God's love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and your joy may be full. This is where our joy comes from and to where it leads is this great upheaval, God's great upheaval. Our joy comes, becomes full like Mary's when we too recognize this holy realm of God's great reversal is coming into our world and what it means for our world. And with Mary, we proclaim it as having come to pass even as we continue working for it in our own world and even as importantly in our own hearts. Let the realm of God come.
Amen. Thank you, Teresa and Tom. Our offering will now be received. You can do that at paypal.me forward slash comma church. And you can also do that after our online service ends today. So uh, please go ahead and do that. blessings upon those who've given them. We pray for the coming of your realm on this earth and may these offerings and gifts serve that purpose and that purpose only. To lift up those in low places and bring down the gospel. We dedicate these gifts in the name of Christ who comes into our world and makes our joy full. Amen.
On this third Sunday of Advent, go forth with joy. May Christ's joy be in you, and may your joy be full in the coming of God's realm on this earth. Amen. For joining us today. Thank you, Teresa and Tom and Mary Barbara and Rose and Bob for making worship happen today. Join us again next week. Remember to go to paypal.me forward slash church to give your offering. Y'all have a great week.